Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into the fascinating world of the biology of belief by Bruce H. Lipton, PhD. This groundbreaking work elucidates a paradigm shift in biology, weaving a compelling narrative that suggests a potent connection between mind and matter. Lipton's accessible examples and lucid explanations present a radical departure from conventional understanding, challenging the long-held belief that genes dictate our behavior and identity. Our esteemed author, a pioneering stem cell biologist, has made remarkable strides in the field of new biology. Lipton's academic credentials are equally impressive, having taught cell biology at the University of Wisconsin and conducted cutting-edge research at Stanford University's School of Medicine. His profound integration of science and spirituality garnered him the prestigious Goy Peace Award in 2009. The Biology of Belief is not merely a book for biology enthusiasts or scientific scholars. It holds profound insights for anyone intrigued by the rapidly evolving landscape of modern biology, the unprecedented influence we wield over our genes, and those eager to bear witness to the birthing of scientific revolutions. So, join us as we unravel the wisdom ingrained within the biology of belief. The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracles. Introduction, Unearth the Connection Between Spirituality and Biology. New advancements in biology are painting a fascinating picture, one where the dominance of genes is considerably lessened, pushing the environment and our individual perceptions to the forefront. The Biology of Belief, breaks down these critical deviations from conventional biology to introduce the exciting realm of modern biological research and how it leads us towards a novel, perhaps even spiritual, understanding of life. In our journey together, you'll uncover how our genes can be turned on and off, the importance of fostering peace over conflict, and the compelling argument that we are sculpted in the image of the universe or a divine entity. Part 1. Evolution, a tale of collaboration, not rivalry. Who's the mind behind the theory of evolution? If you're about to say Charles Darwin, hold that thought. Our credit goes a bit further back in time to French biologist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. But Lamarck's take on evolution strayed from Darwin's vision. Instead of a grand battle royale amongst species, Lamarck saw a more harmonious dance. He envisioned cooperation playing a vital role in evolution, a stark contrast from the Darwinian view, where the fittest species survived through competition. Darwin's model suggested that random genetic mutations aiding survival led to evolutionary progression. However, Lamarck proposed that species evolve as they learn to synchronize themselves with their environment and modern understandings of evolution tend to align more with Lamarck's perspective. Let's examine our immune system, for instance, our body's first line of defense against pathogens. When viruses invade, our antibodies wage a war against the foreign bodies. Successful antibodies then remember the intruders and develop specialized strategies to neutralize them. This crucial information is subsequently passed on to their descendant cells reiterating Lamarck's belief that organisms often collaborate rather than relentlessly battle against each other, contemporary scientific research provides plentiful evidence of symbiotic relationships existing even between different species. Our own digestive system is a case in point. It's home to billions of friendly bacteria that enable us to break down the food we consume. Our survival hinges on their existence and function, a classic example of interspecies cooperation. Extending this concept, it turns out that cooperation isn't confined to just living organisms. It extends down to the genetic level as well. It's been found that genes can be shared across species, not merely passed from parent to offspring. Now, let's dive further into this biological model that reveals the strength in unity and mutual aid, confirming Lamarck's idea of cooperation. Part 2. Cells. 
unmasking the true command center. Let's turn to one of nature's greatest survivors to further delve into Lamarack's principle of cooperation, the cell. Every single function within us, from digestion to immunity, is a replica of processes within a solitary cell. Cells, some of the earliest life forms on Earth, are repositories of immense wisdom, enabling them to persist while countless species have faded into oblivion. The wisdom of cells comes to light when they're extracted from the body and cultivated in a lab. In such a scenario, they demonstrate their innate intelligence by actively seeking environments conducive to growth and shunning those that are not. But what's the source of this intelligence? What guides the behavior of cells? Conventional wisdom might lead you to point towards the cell nucleus, the home of DNA, the holder of genetic information. But if that were accurate, the removal of a cell's nucleus should induce immediate cellular death. However, the surprising reality is that even without its nucleus, a cell can live and function as usual. That's because, contrary to popular belief, the nucleus isn't the cell's brain, but its gonad, responsible for reproduction. The actual command center of the cell lies elsewhere, within its membrane. This protective barrier encloses the cell and harbors two types of proteins, receptor proteins and effector proteins. They interact with the environment to determine the cell's course of action. Receptor proteins pick up environmental cues, which effector proteins then translate into action. If these proteins are eliminated from the cell, it would render the cell effectively brain dead, losing its capacity to react to its surroundings. It's within the membrane, then, that the real magic happens. It's the cell's true brain. Part 3. Genes and Destiny. Breaking Down Preconceived Notions. Even Darwin, the founding father of evolutionary theory, expressed concerns about his own work, wondering if he underestimated the impact of environmental factors on evolution. This self-doubt is reflective of the shortcomings present in Darwinian theories. Take the theory of genetic determinism, for instance, that puts genes on a pedestal as the primary drivers of biological development. It suggests that the assortment of proteins comprising an organism's body is dictated by its genes. But here's where the theory stumbles. If genes were the sole blueprint for our biological makeup, we'd need a corresponding gene for each protein, amounting to a staggering minimum of 120,000 genes. However, the human genome falls vastly short of this figure, boasting a mere 25,000 genes. That prompts the question why. What else shapes our biology? It seems that our environment has a pivotal role to play in this narrative. Regulatory proteins encircling the DNA within our cells serve as critical interpreters, turning environmental signals into cell activity. They do this by selectively activating certain segments of DNA. Take, for instance, a person carrying a gene predisposing them to a specific condition like Parkinson's disease. The mere existence of the gene doesn't guarantee the onset of the disease. It's contingent on whether the regulatory proteins permit the activation of the gene. So what a cell ultimately becomes is heavily influenced by its environment, suggesting that a deterministic or solely gene-dependent Darwinian perspective might be far from the full picture. Part 4. The Outdated Paradigm in Medicine. A Risk We Can't Ignore. It may shock you to discover that one of the major causes of death in the Western world stems from complications linked to medical treatments. In 2003, the United States saw these very complications rank as the leading cause of death. So what's driving this concerning trend? The answer might lie in our understanding of physics. In the early 20th century, physics underwent a seismic shift. The traditional Newtonian perspective which presented a linear cause-effect relationship, A always results in B, which invariably leads to C, was upended by Einstein's paradigm. Einstein's vision entailed a complex interplay between energy and matter. A can sometimes result in B, but may also lead to C. 
In stark contrast, biology hasn't made this leap yet, still anchored in the Newtonian framework. This old-school perspective shapes the way we approach medical treatments. Identify a likely cause of the ailment and then administer a standard treatment for it. But experiments indicate that biological entities also operate on Einsteinian principles, embracing a more intertwined process. In studies with fruit fly cells, it was observed that protein interactions weren't linear, but rather a chain of interconnected reactions. These reactions can trigger a domino effect, with a tweak in one area inducing changes in other zones. And the impact isn't uniform. Some areas experience more significant shifts than others. This intricate web of reactions might shed light on why adverse side effects from medical treatments are so rampant. Not everyone's unique needs can be met by a one-size-fits-all treatment. Perhaps it's high time for biological science to broaden its horizons, incorporating alternative treatments like acupuncture instead of cookie-cutter solutions. However, with the powerful pharmaceutical industry dictating trends, we seem to be stuck with potentially harmful medication for the time being. Part 5. The Power of Mind. The Invisible Force Steering Our Health. The placebo effect is a phenomenon you're likely familiar with. An individual recuperates from an ailment after receiving a mock treatment, like consuming a sugar pill. This intriguing outcome suggests that our recovery is, at least partially, a mind game. We mend because we believe we will. So what's the mechanics behind this? It's clear that our mind holds the reins when it comes to regulating our body. But it's not just the conscious mind at the helm. It works in tandem with the formidable subconscious mind. Scientist Candace Pert uncovered a fascinating facet of the mind's power. She revealed that our mind isn't confined to our cranium. Instead, it permeates our body through signal molecules. These molecules not only transmit information to the brain, but can also be commandeered by the brain to send data in the opposite direction. Moreover, Pert's research indicated that our conscious mind can generate molecules of emotion, equipping our body to feel better. Our capacity to leverage our conscious mind to override our reflexive responses to our surroundings sets us apart, defining our unique persona. However, this ability can be a double-edged sword. While we possess the power to override our primal instincts and program our behavior, a capability not seen in animals, this may also lead us to internalize harmful programming. Such a situation can arise when we're subjected to negative messaging from influential figures like parents or teachers. Consider a scenario where a teacher repeatedly brands you as stupid. This damaging label could seep into your subconscious programming, causing you to shy away from intellectual pursuits, ambitious career choices, or voicing your opinions. The potential positive and negative ramifications of our control over our beliefs can profoundly impact our biology, leading us down some intriguing paths, which we'll explore next. Part 6. Navigating Life's Labyrinth The Dual Survival Strategies of Growth and Protection Life on Earth has been teeming for billions of years, but how have we managed to endure throughout this extensive timeline? Our bodies showcase two fundamental behaviors that have ensured our survival, growth, and protection. This interplay between growth and protection can be illustrated by observing human cells. In one experiment, cloned human cells were housed in a culture dish. When toxins entered their environment, the cells receded, exhibiting a protection response. Conversely, when a nutritious substance was introduced, the cells flocked towards it, a clear display of a growth response. Since these two behaviors stand in direct contrast to each other, they can't simultaneously occur. Growth kicks in when we're in a state of well-being. However, when a threat or stressor sets off a protection response, growth is put on hold. While the concept of growth is relatively straightforward, the protection state demands a deeper dive. The protection response is multifaceted, encompassing several mechanisms. The immune system, for instance, 
fortifies the body against internal threats such as bacteria and viruses. Then there's the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, HPA axis, a more potent mechanism. It shields us from external threats but simultaneously dials down our immune system. The HPA axis, entrenched in our nervous system, underpins the fight or flight response. Suppose you find yourself face to face with a lion. Your body will either gear up to confront the beast or prepare to make a hasty exit. This robust mechanism is a product of our extensive history of battling external threats throughout evolution. However, the HPA axis isn't a model of sophistication. In stress-induced scenarios, it's prone to trigger easily. That's why we're often riddled with unnecessary anxiety when it comes to activities like delivering presentations or sitting for exams. So, to truly flourish, we must learn to regulate the HPA axis response, or in simpler terms, we need to manage our stress levels. Part 7. Parental Influence. The Invisible Hand Shaping a Child's Mindset and Behavior from Conception. Our journey thus far has been enlightening. We've delved into how environmental signals influence our cells, how our bodies grapple with stress, and how we hold the power to rewrite our own programming. How can we harness these insights for our benefit? One practical area to apply this knowledge lies in parenting. It's not widely recognized that a child's development is influenced by its surroundings from the very moment of conception. The Darwinian school of thought, the theory of genetic determinism, would have us think that parents don't play a pivotal role in a child's development. After all, our genes dictate our future, right? However, research tells a different tale. Throughout fetal development within the womb, the fetus is continually molded by its environment. Some scientists propose that conditions in the womb can set the stage for vulnerability to health problems like diabetes, neurosis, and strokes later in life. Therefore, parents have an immense responsibility to offer their offspring the best start possible by crafting an optimal womb environment. For instance, maintaining a nutritious diet and adopting lifestyle habits conducive to the child's healthy development can set the groundwork for a promising start in life. A parent's actions significantly shape how a child perceives the world, what they fear, what they are comfortable with. Parents should strive to steer clear of burdening their child with unnecessary fears or stressors. Labeling a child as weak or stupid, for example, can become ingrained into the child's subconscious, casting a long shadow that may extend into adulthood and potentially throughout their life. However, this shouldn't strike fear into our hearts. Even in later stages of life, we retain the power to reprogram ourselves, overriding instinctual responses and reaching heights of greatness. Part 8. The Art of Cooperation evolution's underappreciated mechanism for survival. What's the mantra that comes to mind when you think of evolution? Perhaps it's survival of the fittest. Actually, make love, not war, might be a more accurate catchphrase. But why does it hold so much sway? For billions of years, cells have honed the skill of cooperation, cultivating systems that have enabled their survival. Rewind back to the dawn of life on Earth, you'd see an abundance of single-celled organisms locked in competition for scant resources. In due course, they realized they could accomplish so much more through collaboration. Thus, the era of multicellular life was ushered in. Now take a look at the human body, home to an astounding 100 trillion cells. Each cell in a healthy body has a designated role and a cozy nook to inhabit. Not a single cell is left in the lurch forced to fend for itself. Consider the possibilities if we drew inspiration from the humble cell and prioritized cooperation in our lives. What feats could we accomplish as a human society? Though it's widely believed that humans are hardwired to be selfish, selfish behavior is surprisingly absent in the animal kingdom. And let's not forget, our roots are firmly planted in the animal kingdom. Even baboons, reputed as one of the most aggressive species on the planet, aren't genetically programmed to solely look out for their own interests. If even baboons are capable of cooperation, 
surely we humans can and should cultivate the art of working together. Pursuing our selfish objectives might seem like a viable strategy now. But as our population balloons, we're bound to find ourselves in increasingly tense conflicts. Our best bet for a promising future lies in communication, developing shared strategies rooted in our common goals and values. After all, we all aspire for a planet that's not just habitable but harmonious. It's time to dispel the myth that we're inherently selfish. We hold the power to reshape our programming and carve a cooperative path forward. Part 9. A Cosmic Reflection scientific support for our origins and continued existence post-death. Several religious doctrines posit that we are created in the image of God. To the atheists among us, this proposition might be a tough pill to swallow. However, if we take God to represent the universe or the entirety of our environment, there is evidence that indeed we are spun from the fabric of the universe or from what some might interpret as God. To elucidate, the proteins populating every cell in our body are responsive to signals from our surroundings. These signals dictate their behavior, thereby sculpting our identity. Since our bodies are essentially a collection of cells, we can infer that we are products of our environment. The connection between spirituality and science doesn't end with our creation. There's also evidence suggesting that we persist after death. Allow me to explain. Our cells' membranes are adorned with identity receptors, conferring uniqueness upon them, and by extension, upon us. Functioning like antennas, these receptors gather signals from our environment, crafting our identity in the process. Let's draw a parallel to a television broadcast for clarity. Suppose our body represents a television set and our identity is the image being broadcast on the screen. If the TV, our body, malfunctions, does it mean that the broadcasted image, our identity, is extinguished? Not quite. If you bring in another TV, the image resurfaces. So, even when our bodies perish, the blueprint of our identity lingers in the environment. If another individual were to possess the exact set of identity receptors, As you, they would tune into the same broadcast and voila, you would make a comeback. In essence, to resonate with this spiritual concept, we need to acknowledge the fact that nothing can operate within our body without our cells intercepting signals from our environment. Final Summary The central takeaway from this book The long-standing notion that our genes dictate our destiny is losing ground in the face of contemporary scientific revelations. The cutting-edge field of biology is unearthing evidence that we exert a substantial influence over our genes. As a result, it's crucial that those immersed in this new frontier of biology focus their energies on uncovering these intricate mechanisms, providing humanity with the tools to surmount its challenges. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.